the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard about the 16th day of the war when karna defeated nakul but let him go to keep his promise to kunti on the other side yudhishthir let go of duryodhan for bhim to keep his promise At dawn, when the two sides were busy preparing for the seventeenth day's battle, Karna stepped into Duryodhan's tent. Duryodhan was putting on his armor with the help of some of his attendants. Karna said, "Duryodhan, may I have a word with you?" Duryodhan asked his attendants and guards to leave, and then said, "Yes, Karna, tell me how can I help." Karna looked right into Duryodhan's eyes and said, "My friend, I promise you, today either I will kill Arjun or he will kill me. Since the beginning of the war, Arjun and I hardly met on the battlefield. Both of us were busy fighting other warriors. Today, I will attack him right from the beginning and won't stop till one of us falls." I am a superior warrior than Arjun my vijay bow which was gifted to me by my guru parashuram is superior to Arjun's gandev with vijay in my hand Arjun won't be able to harm a single hair on my body however however an impatient duryodhan asked i think it would only be fair to mention the areas where Arjun is better equipped than i am said karna Arjun has in his possession his never-ending quivers and his indestructible chariot from Agni. To top it all, he has Vasudev Krishna as his charioteer, who not only drives him around but also advises him when needed. It is because of Krishna that Arjun remains undefeated. I can provide you the best chariot we have as good as Arjun's and I will have you followed by multiple chariots who would provide you with an endless supply of weapons as far as a chariot is concerned I cannot get Krishna for you but if you have anybody else in mind let me know I'll make sure you have him as your charioteer King Shalya of Madra is an expert pilot he is also extremely knowledgeable about horses and he is as wise as krishna if you can convince him to be my charioteer i am sure nobody will be able to save arjun from my arrows duryodhan held karna's hand and said come with me then he stepped out of his tent and walked towards shalya's camp with karna following him when they arrived outside shalya's tent duryodhan turned towards karna and said You wait here let me do the talking Shalya was having his meal when Duryodhan entered the tent Good morning my dear nephew said Shalya what brings you here Duryodhan nodded and said Uncle Shalya I have a favor to ask I hope you won't turn me down Ha I have agreed to fight on your behalf instead of joining my true nephews the Pandavas what more can I do You know the source of Arjun's strength is his charioteer Krishna it is because of Krishna's advice and shrewdness Arjun is still alive and undefeated Karna feels if you take up the reins of his chariot then he can easily defeat Arjun on behalf of my dear friend and our commander in chief Karna I'd like to request you to be Karna's charioteer Shalya's face turned red with rage. How dare you make such an insulting proposal? 
I am a high-born Kshatriya. I'd never serve a low-caste son of a charioteer. If you try to force me, I'll immediately leave and go back to my kingdom. Uncle Shalya, please, please try to understand, pleaded Duryodhan. You are the only person who is wiser than Krishna. Only you can guide Karna the way Krishna guides Arjun. With you at the helm, nobody would be able to stop Karna and victory will be ours. Shalya thought for a moment. He remembered his promise to Yudhishthir. When the time comes, he'd keep Karna distracted with spiteful taunts and insults such that Karna fails to focus on Arjun. Shalya said, You said in front of everybody that I am wiser than Krishna. For that, I forgive your insolent behavior and I accept your proposal. Duryodhan was ecstatic. He called Karna who was waiting outside. Come in, come in my friend. I have great news to share. Karna stepped in and with joined palms bowed to Shalya. Shalya raised his hand to bless him and said, I'll be your charioteer but I have a condition. Karna said, To have you as my charioteer and guide, I can accept any condition. Shalya said, while I am your charioteer, I can say whatever I like and you will have to listen and tolerate. Do you accept? Before Karna could answer, Turyodhan said, of course we accept. What do you say, Karna? Karna bowed and said, to have the great Shalya as my guide, I am willing to accept any condition. Shalya smiled. Well then, Let's go, pick our horses and load our chariots. We have a war to fight. Duryodhan arranged for the best chariot for Karna and said, Karna, you have all that you asked for. Now go and fetch me my victory. Karna mounted the chariot and said, Don't you worry, my friend. I will keep my promise. He looked at Shalya who was holding the reins of his horses and said, King Shalya, take me to the battlefield. Today the Pandavas will see what I am made of. My arrows will kill them all and make my friend Duryodhan victorious. <laughs> Shalya laughed. Don't be so sure, my friend. Maybe you haven't yet learned your lesson from the numerous defeats you suffered at the hands of the Pandavas. When Arjun's Gandiv rings out in the battlefield and his arrows cover the sky like a dark cloud and kill your soldiers in hordes, you won't feel so exuberant. Karna's face turned red with anger. But he remembered Shalya's condition and decided to exercise restraint. He picked up his bow and in a calm but stern voice said, Let's go. As Karna's chariot rolled out, the Kauravas shouted in joy, Long live Karna! Karna will destroy the Pandavas and bring us victory! Karna said to Shalya, You hear them? Remember, at this stage of the war, if anybody can bring victory to the Kauravas, it is I. Shalya smirked, Victory? <laughs> really? In all your past encounters, did you ever defeat Arjun? Remember the time when the Gandharvas imprisoned Duryodhan? You were the first to flee that battle. It was Arjun who freed Duryodhan from them. When you, along with Bhishma and Dron, went to steal Virat's cattle, Arjun thrashed you as well as the rest of the Kauravas. There is no comparison between you and Arjun. He is the best warrior the world has ever seen. Karna was furious. Stop praising Arjun! How could you keep praising our enemy? If you like the Pandavas so much, what are you doing in the Kaurava army? The Pandavas must have planted you to create dissent amongst us, make us weak. You are Duryodhan's uncle. 
Otherwise, I'd have killed you this very moment. Just keep quiet and take me to Arjun. <laughs> Shalya laughed. When a man nears his end, he loses his senses. I'm afraid that's why you have lost your mind too. Otherwise, you wouldn't underestimate the strength of the Krishna Arjun pair. Nobody in this world can defeat them. If you have the slightest wisdom left in you, I suggest you surrender to Krishna and seek his blessings. I am fully aware of Krishna and Arjun's might and power, said Karna. Still, for my friend Duryodhan's sake, I will fight them. I am not afraid of anybody, be it God or human. The only thing that concerns me is Guru Parashuram's curse. Parashuram's curse? Shalya was curious. Many years ago, I went to Parashuram to learn from him the advanced skills of warfare and divine weapons. Parashuram would only accept Brahmins as a student. So I lied and introduced myself as a Brahmin. He taught me everything and was extremely pleased with my performance. He gifted me many of his divine weapons. One day, he was sleeping with his head on my lap when Indra took the form of a venomous insect and bore into my thigh. Blood gushed out of my wound, but I clenched my teeth and tolerated the excruciating pain. I didn't move so as not to disturb my Guru's rest. When Gurudev woke up and saw my wound, he immediately knew I was a fraud. You cannot be a Brahmin, he said. A Brahmin can never bear such terrible pain. Who are you? I told him the truth, that I am the son of a charioteer. Guru Parashuram said, the weapons I taught you can only be activated by a Brahmin. When the time arrives for you to use the weapons, you won't remember how to fire them. Karna paused a little and then said, Because of this curse, I don't plan to use those weapons. I will use the ones that are equally devastating though. If my chariot wheels don't get stuck in the ground, Arjun won't be able to escape. Wheels stuck in the ground? Shalya was surprised. Yes, said Karna. Once while practicing my archery, I accidentally killed a Brahmin's cow. The angry Brahmin cursed me. During my final war, my body will become so heavy that my chariot wheel will sink into the ground and get stuck. I offered him wealth, cattle, gold, but he refused. He refused to withdraw his curse. King Shalya, I know you despise me. Still, I am telling you all this to let you know that despite the curses, I am not afraid to fight Arjun. Remember, Karna never fights for riches or for the throne. Karna only fights for his honor and that's what I will do. While Shalya was busy trying to distract Karna, the battle was raging. Yudhishthir saw Karna from a distance and asked his chariot to take him there. Karna, it seems you are too eager to fight Arjuna. Before you meet Arjun, fight me. Let's see what you have got. Yudhishthir hurled a series of deadly weapons at Karna. A distracted Karna was caught by surprise. The weapon struck his left shoulder and threw him down on his chariot. For a few moments, he lost consciousness, but he recovered soon and picked up his bow. In quick succession, Karna killed Yudhishthir's guards. The next arrow pierced his armor. Yudhishthir cried out in pain and pulled out the arrow from his chest. Blood gushed out of his wound. But Yudhishthir ignored the pain and hurled a spear at Karna. It whizzed past Karna's head, leaving him unscathed. 
An angry Karna struck back vehemently. Yudhishthir's body was riddled with arrows. With each strike, Yudhishthir writhed in pain, but Karna was careful not to kill him. He destroyed Yudhishthir's chariot. Yudhishthir fell to the ground and screamed in pain, A chariot! Send me a chariot! A Pandava charioteer heard his cry and brought his chariot to Yudhishthir, who scrambled up on the vehicle and panted, Take me away! Take me away! Or Karna would kill me! Before he could leave, Karna brought his chariot next to Yudhishthir and held his shoulder. Yudhishthir, are you not a Kshatriya? How can you flee the battlefield? The truth is you are not fit to be a Kshatriya warrior. You have mastered the Vedas and the scriptures better than your weapons. You are more of a Brahmin than a Kshatriya. <laughs> I advise you to quit fighting and practice meditation for that suits you best. Send Arjun to fight me. He is the only one worthy of fighting me. He shoved Yudhishthir back on the chariot and let him go. Arjun was busy fighting the Samsaktas. Krishna said, Arjun, let's not waste our time with the Samsaktas. We must attack Karna and neutralize him. You are right, agreed Arjun. Take me to Karna. Krishna turned his chariot, but before he could leave, Ashwatthama attacked Arjun with a volley of arrows. Arjun cried out, Get out of my way, Ashwatthama! I have no time to fight you! Ashwatthama didn't listen and kept up the attack. Krishna glanced back at Arjun and said, Don't show any mercy to Aswatthama. Take care of him now. Arjun shot some of his deadliest weapons at Aswatthama and shattered his chariot. Drone's son stumbled onto the ground and before he could get up and gather himself, Arjun's chariot sped away. On the other end of the battlefield, Karna was busy decimating the Pandava army. From his Vijaya bow, he fired the Bhargavastra, a deadly weapon that bloomed into thousands of arrows and covered the sky before raining down on the enemy. From a distance, Arjun watched the spectacle and said, Look! Look, Krishna! Karna has fired the Bhargavastra! I can't stop it now. It will cause immense damage to our army. What should I do? Krishna thought for a moment. He knew Arjun needed a little rest and a boost of motivation to kill Karna. Besides, Karna was at the peak of his fighting spirit. Later in the day, he would have worn out a bit. A good time to finish him. He said to Arjun, I hear our king Yudhishthir has been seriously injured by Karna. Let's go to his tent and see how he's doing. I'm sure he'd like to hear some words of assurance from you. We can return later and take care of Karna. Arjun agreed and Krishna turned his chariot towards the Pandava camp. In his tent, Yudhishthir was lying on his bed with multiple injuries on his body. The healers and medics were busy cleaning up his wounds and applying healing emollients on them. When Yudhishthir saw Arjun, he jumped up on his bed with expectation. Oh, how happy I am to see you. You must have come here with the good news, right? Tell me, tell me, how did you kill Karna? That evil man almost killed me today. It is because of him that Duryodhan dares to fight us. It is he who instigated the Sashan to drag Draupadi to the court and insult her in front of the Kurus. Now that the horrible man is lying dead in the battlefield, I can sleep in peace. Arjun didn't know what to say, but he had to tell him the truth. My king, I, I, I think you have misunderstood our visit. I haven't killed Karna yet. He's still fighting and brother Bhim is defending our army. I heard you were seriously injured and got anxious. I thought I'd pay you a visit and see for myself how you are doing. Yudhishthir's face turned red with anger. You came to see me? Or was it that you were scared to see Karna's might and fled the battlefield? Shame on you, Arjun! 
We have been depending on you to kill Karna and make us victorious. And now you disappoint us by running away from your enemy? If you are so scared of facing Karna, hand over your Gandhi to some other Pandava warrior. Let him take care of Karna while you stay in hiding. Arjun's blood began to boil. His face turned purple. His nostrils flared. Sweat beads covered his forehead. He ran out of the tent and dropped on his knees. Breathing heavily, he took off his helmet and hurled it on the ground. Then he got up, pulled out his sword and turned back towards Yudhishthir's tent. And there he saw Krishna standing. What happened, Falguni? asked Krishna. You came here to see Yudhishthir and he is doing fine. You should be happy. Why are you angry and why have you pulled out your sword? I will kill Yudhishthir, blurted Arjun. Kill Yudhishthir? Are you out of your mind? Krishna was shocked. I have promised if anybody told me to give up my Gandev and that to some other warrior, I'd decapitate him immediately. King Yudhishthir insulted me and asked me to hand over my Gandev to another warrior. To keep my oath, I must kill Yudhishthir. Isn't that the right thing to do? Asked Arjun. Shame on you, Arjun. You have been blindly following the Dharma without knowing its true intent. Killing any life for no good reason is not Dharma. And you want to kill your brother for a silly promise you made? I would say it is better to tell a lie than to kill. There was once a Brahmin sage named Kaushik. One day, a few men and women came running to his hermitage to take shelter from a band of decoits. They hid behind the bushes in the hermitage. When the decoits came and asked Kaushik if he knew where the men were hiding, the sage showed them the bush, for he would never lie. The decoits pulled the men and women out and killed them mercilessly. The poor Brahmin didn't know the real intent of Dharma and for this, for this sin, he had to suffer in hell. Dharma means to hold and protect. And to protect somebody, if one has to lie, so be it. Arjun was confused. Krishna, I, I, I get your point, but what am I supposed to do now? If I don't honor my oath, I'll commit a grave sin. You tell me. What should I do to protect Yudhishthir and save myself too? Krishna replied, Whatever Yudhishthir said was caused by his pain and frustration. Besides, he must have thought a little insult can stoke your anger and motivate you to go after Karna and kill him. This is what I suggest you do. A respectable man is killed in spirit when he is insulted. You say some insulting words to Yudhishthir and that would hurt him enough to feel like death. Then you can apologize for your behavior and make amends. The wise king Yudhishthir wouldn't mind and would accept your apology. Arjun agreed. He placed the sword in its case and stepped inside Yudhishthir's tent. Krishna followed him. Arjun stood in front of Yudhishthir. His eyes bloodshot, his nostrils flaring. In a hoarse voice he said, Yudhishthir, you have no right to insult me. Sitting here in the safety of your tent, far away from the battlefield, you have no idea what is going on. You are weak and you are cruel. You cannot hurt anybody with your weapon. All you do is hurt us with your caustic words. You have no right to blame me or anybody for what's happening in the war. It is your foolish decision to play that game of dice that has put us in this terrible situation. It is because of that irresponsible act of yours, thousands are dying now. Still, still we have been defending you. But you keep accusing us and blaming us for not performing our duty. Huh? Shame on you. 
Arjun blurted out all that he had kept hidden in his chest in one breath. Yudhishthir was stunned. But before he could say anything, Arjun pulled out his sword and swung it above his head. Krishna stepped forward and held Arjun's hand. What are you doing? Why have you pulled out your sword again? Arjun replied, I have done the most heinous crime. I have insulted my brother, King Yudhishthir. I have no right to live. Let go of my hand. Krishna laughed. <laughs> Moments ago, you were about to kill your brother. Now, you want to kill yourself for saying these harsh words? What would you have done if you had really killed him? Remember, you'd commit a graver sin by killing yourself than killing your own brother. But I understand your feelings. Listen to me. Go to Yudhishthir and sing your own praise to him. Tell him how great you are. Self-praise and boasting is equivalent to suicide. Arjun put down his sword and said, King Yudhishthir, Listen to me. I am the greatest warrior that ever lived. I am next to nobody except Lord Shiva. If I wish, I can destroy the world in a moment. I have the knowledge of using the most powerful weapons. It was I who brought down all the kings to their knees and made them submit to you for a Rajasuya Yagna. It was because of me that you could amass your wealth, build your grand palace and become the emperor of the world. In this great war, Kurukshetra, it is I who killed more than half of your enemy soldiers. When I am in the battlefield with my Gandiv in hand, nobody can defeat me, not even Karna. And I promise you today, Karna will die in my hands. Nothing can stop me. Arjun stopped to catch his breath while Yudhishthir sat on his bed dumbfounded. Arjun then suddenly sank to his knees and with his head bowed, he said, Oh, my king, my brother, forgive me for all that I have said. Someday, someday you will understand the reason for all this. Now allow me to return to the battlefield. Yudhishthir stood up from his bed and said, You have said nothing wrong. Indeed, I am the cause of all this misery. I have put you all and thousands of warriors and soldiers in grave danger. My foolishness and irresponsible behavior have caused immense pain and destruction. I don't deserve to live. Kill me and relieve me of this burden. Krishna came forward and held Yudhishthir's hand. Don't feel bad, my king. Krishna then explained the reason for Arjun's behavior and said, Arjun acted on my advice. You know the laws of dharma better than anybody. Pardon me if I made any mistake. Yudhishthir bowed to Krishna and said, You saved us from a grave crisis. Without you as our guide, we would be blind. Then he turned to Arjun and said, Forgive me, Arjun, for what I said. Trust me, I didn't mean a single word. The brothers embraced each other with tears flowing down their cheeks. Arjun then turned to Krishna and said, My friend, I have a promise to keep. Take me to Karna. Today will be his last day on earth. Krishna and Arjun stepped into their Kapidhva chariot and sped away towards the battlefield. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed, and told by Shudipta Bomik. Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharata Audio.